Well, hello everyone and welcome to Instagram 101, promoting your local, local Rotary Youth Exchange program. My name is Liz Halley and I come from Edmonton, Alberta in Canada and I'm originally from South Africa. I'm really privileged to be here today and it's exciting to be a part of the first online Nyan conference um, where we have uh, over 1000 participants from over 40 different countries. So that's exciting. I wanna begin with a few housekeeping um, things. Uh, before we start the session. First, I want to let you know that this, um, this session is being translated into Spanish and the session is also being recorded. Um, secondly, uh, because we were sharing a presentation, you may need to go up to your, the um, top right hand side uh, of your screen and change your view settings so that you can see the presentation clearly. And thirdly, I want to um, ask you to enter your questions into the chat function, which is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll collect all the, all the questions during the session and then we'll begin to answer them at the end of the session. So please go ahead and do that. Uh, as I said, my name is Liz. I have a background in uh, marketing and communications. Uh, and, um, and so I know how vital it is to ensure that, um, that you understand your audience and you understand how to reach that audience really well. And I think that that's one of the things we're going to try and achieve today. One of the biggest challenges that Rotary Youth Exchange has is trying to find, uh, trying to get the information to people and find the right people to go on Youth Exchange. Uh, and so I think today as we look at uh, Instagram and the platform of Instagram, um, we really are going to look at how do we reach young people um, because those that's our audience and those are the people who are using uh, Instagram. And so obviously it's important to, to communicate with people where they're at. And so with that, I want to introduce um, our two amazing panelists um, who are with us uh, today and will be taking us through the presentation. First up, we have Anna Isabel Barrientos. She lives in Gainesville, Florida, uh, and um, she first heard about uh, the Rotary Youth Exchange program through another student, and um, she was hooked on it ever since, uh, which is really amazing, and she's done an incredible job um, with Rotex um, and a number of things that she has achieved through Rotex. She went on her youth exchange to, uh, to Germany in 2017-18, um, she returned um, and then she decided to set up the uh, Florida, the Northeast Florida Rotex uh, Club. She um, chartered that um, and shepherded it through um, the, um, the spearheading of the project and, and setting up the actual club with uh, Rotex International, which is an incredible feat. Um, Anna fell in love with Germany and she's planning to do her master's back in Germany, which is, is also amazing. Our second presenter is uh, Shannon, and Shannon needs no introduction. She's our tech guru for the conference, and she's also been uh, doing uh, the communications and marketing for the program. And so I'm sure you've probably received many um, emails from Shannon over the last uh, month or so. Shannon lives in Denver, and she grew up in a household of, of Rotarians, and they hosted a number of exchange students um, over the years. And her home was known as the home that could handle the problem children in youth exchange, which many of us know um, all too well. Um, Shannon spent her year uh, as an exchange student in Spain um, and had a great year then. And since she's returned, she's been heavily involved in Rotary Youth Exchange, uh, which is a, a huge commitment. Um, and she's currently doing her master's degree in technology, cybersecurity, and policy. And so Shannon's going to kick off our presentation by discussing a little bit more about cybersecurity and privacy. So over to you, Shannon. Thanks so much, Liz. Um, so privacy and, and cybersecurity are, are really passions I've found um, in the last couple of years. And so this is just kind of a brief piece we want to touch on um, at the beginning before we jump too far in. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so I know that sounds very complicated. Um, to a lot of people, but really what that means is just at the beginning, um, really before you kick off your, your new Instagram account, or if you have an Instagram account, um, just take a quick pause and connect with some of your other um, social media folks in your district or your Rotex who might be helping you out running the account and, and just put some guardrails in place. Um, so for example, have a name policy, have a consistent um, plan for across your, your users who control the account that 
For example, for anyone under the age of 18, you're not going to post their last name. Um, you'll only refer to them by their first name and only if you have approval um, from them, whether that's verbal or written can be up to you, but just that you've, you've thought about that kind of in advance. Um, the next piece is ask for consent. So consent is, is key and, and we're getting that message in a lot of different areas. Uh, but this, you know, people do have the right to control their own image. Um, someone, you know, even as a young person might have some pretty strong feelings about if their photo is shared online or not. That may just be because they're a private person. Um, it also might be because they have a history of harassment or stalking or something that they just don't want their face um, online. And so double checking before you post someone's photo, um, again, whether that's written or whether that's just kind of an ad hoc, hey, I'm gonna put this online, is that okay? Um, is up to your district to kind of control. Um, the other piece in a, in a less uh, privacy security setting and more just um, a have a plan for your account. So just kind of having a, a question, a, a check in with your team, what kind of content are you comfortable sharing from the district account? For example, um, it's okay to share that a meetup will be at a park, but we don't want to include an address. Or we'll only include addresses when we're at a public location and not, for example, at the chair's home address for a barbecue or something like that. So just having guardrails for private information ahead of time, or if you have an account, having guardrails so that everyone is operating under the same um, set, of, set of rules of the road um, can be a really good idea. Additionally, if somebody does come to you after the fact and says, hey, you know, can you go ahead and take that post down? Um, go ahead and comply. Um, there's not, it's not the end of the world to take down a post, even if it has a bunch of likes, um, if someone is uncomfortable with what, with their photo in that image, for example. Um, the other piece is just it's it's really important to have secure passwords that are shared in a safe way. So that might be a password manager, um, that might be an encrypted email that you guys share back and forth or that expires, um, or or some sort of way that the password is shared securely so your account has less of a chance of getting hacked and taken over. Um, the other piece is, is to double check that there's a recovery email that the district controls. Um, we've all had a volunteer who got overwhelmed and maybe disappeared. And if that happens with your Instagram account and the district doesn't control that recovery email, you're gonna have a really hard time getting back into the account. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And so just kind of as a summary, um, it's it's nice to know what to do and some quick what not to do's. So again, double check you're not sharing students' full names. Um, ask before tagging other people in photos. Um, and this might seem pretty simple, but it's really easy to download a photo and repost it if you think it's funny. Um, this is something that happens a lot in the Instagram world and in Twitter and on Facebook. And we really want to not create kind of a bad habit in Rotary. And so we would want to make sure that we're not rep that we're using reposting tools that give credit to the original author rather than posting someone else's content without giving them credit. Um, and again, that just that double check. Um, we have this kind of idea that young people just want to post everything and have no boundaries with social media. Um, and that's really just not true. So just double check with people um, before posting a photo of them. So um, that's my privacy security uh, soapbox. And now I'm going to hand it back over to, to Anna. Thank you, Shannon. And definitely what she talked about is very, very important. I wouldn't understate um, how important it is to lay out a plan for your district. But anyways, I am really excited to talk to you all about Instagram today. And I've been lucky enough to be able to actively participate in my district's Instagram. Um, I was uh, partially the social media coordinator a couple of years ago, and now uh, my sister mainly runs it. Um, but I've had a lot of experience through through that and through the last couple of years. So um, 
as we move throughout my presentation, you'll notice that things get a little bit more specific and uh, nuanced, but um, we will have a Q&A session at the end, so please feel free to leave any questions in the chat, as Liz mentioned. So the first important um, piece of any social media is who is your audience? Who do you want to talk to? So this leads your content. Um, this leads where you're posting. So when we're talking about Instagram versus other social media platforms, um, Instagram is the ideal platform because it has the demographics that Rotary Youth Exchange and aims to um, aims to reach. So the reason we don't emphasize Facebook in this um, presentation is because Facebook is now being used by an older demographic and um, Instagram really has a lot of functions that allow you to not only post content but engage as well. So um, another thing to keep in mind with dealing with your audience is you really want to highlight what makes your program special. Why do they want to take time like from their scrolling or whatever they're doing to look at your program and look at your content. Um, these are very important things to keep in mind. So for this presentation, I'll be using uh, my own district's Instagram as an example, just so you guys can follow along. Um, but the first thing is that um, your Instagram, your official Instagram should be a business account. Um, as you can see here, having a business account allows you to have access to this bar right here, um, which includes insights like analytic and engagement, which we will get into a, a little bit um, further into the presentation. But it is important because it allows you access to this and um, makes, your, um, makes your account public, which means that more people can find it. Um, another important thing to keep in mind is that links are only available through your bio. So um, you definitely want to have something called a link tree. It allows you to have more than one link available through um, the link in your bio. And for example, if you were to post it in the comments or on a story or anything like that, unfortunately, um, Instagram users can't click that. So that's why that's very important. Um, another thing to keep in mind, color schemes really matter. Shannon will get into this a little bit more when she talks about Canva, um, but it really is important that you pick a color scheme and you stick to that because that's how people identify you, your district, your program, um, because as we all know, there are many RYE programs across the world and you want to have something um, unique to you. Um, which goes into my next point. So with your bio, and that's uh, what you see under Rotary Youth Exchange District 6970. So that is should be a short and sweet phrase, but it should convey what your program is about and why people should be interested. Your account bio is one of the first things that people see when they click on your profile. So you definitely want to draw people in, um, in a subtle way. Um, Another thing that you can see here that my district has is highlights. So um, you can see tips and tricks, app info, FAQs for the scholarship, country information. So um, highlights like this are very important because as the name implies, it highlights the important parts that you want people um, to have access to. So especially when you're communicating with your potential students, they're probably going to have questions or want more information. And that's exactly what your highlights are for. Perfect. So when we're talking about optimizing our use of Instagram, the first thing I will always say is content, content, content. That is very, very important because the more you post, the more you engage, the more Instagram recognizes your effort, so to, so to speak. You're feeding the algorithm and you are popping up in more searches. You're becoming more visible as a program. 
Um, as you can see on this slide, I made a very rough uh, content calendar. So content calendars are really great for those of us who are not used to posting every day or even twice a week. It helps you keep on track. It helps you sort of plan out your month so you know what needs to be done for that specific content. Um, and it just overall helps organize. So I would highly suggest that your district have something similar to this. Um, another thing I highly suggest is fully using all of Instagram's tools. So Instagram has so many different um, tools available to engage your audience. The first one, which is one that we use often, are stories. Stories are a way that you can post something for 24 hours and then it goes away. It most of the time has um, a great function when it comes to events, advertising events. Um, we also use it for um, takeovers in my district. I'll talk a little bit further about that in the next slide. Um, and stories are generally great when you want a fast burst of information. Now, posts, posts are what you think of traditionally. That's what people have access to um, on your grid. That's what um, is constantly on your page. And that is a great place for uh, hashtagging, which again, I'll get into a bit later. Um, IGTV, so IGTV is almost as the name implies, it's like a small snippet of a TV show is what you should think of it as. So normally on Instagram, you can only watch a video for a minute before um, it stops and you can't anymore. With IGTV, it allows you to post videos of a longer um, length, and that allows you to have special highlights. Like, for example, if you wanted to talk about one of the countries that you exchange with, that would be a great time to use a longer video. And then the last thing is Reels. So Reels is one of the newest features for Instagram. It's very similar to uh, TikTok, which is all the rage now with um, Gen Z. And it's really just, um, it's almost similar to stories, except for it's for videos and it's for a fast burst of um, information. So when you want to... Mm, almost catch people that's for like catchy um videos like fun content something people can really like um you know engage with laugh with that sort of thing um and i think it's it's a great tool it does require a little bit more knowledge in terms of video editing but um otherwise i'd say it's it's really great so um I know a lot of you asked about content, um, and what I have to say with this is that there's really no wrong way. There's no um, there's no wrong content. You can you can come up with so many different ideas, and really the point is to highlight your program, and that will be a theme throughout this presentation is to highlight what makes your program special. And as we were talking about with audiences. Um, your Instagram doesn't necessarily have to be catered towards one way or the other. So you can cater towards students and Rotex, and you can cater towards uh, district Rotarians and teachers. So um, I've listed out a couple of different ideas here that um, appeal to both of those audiences. I do have to say that the more interactive people are with your content, the better. So you would aim towards having content that people either like or comment or polls, yes or no, all of that is really, really great. Um, for example, as I was saying with takeovers, so takeovers are when an outbound or inbound student takes over your Instagram and they post in the story a day in their life. So they post like different snippets and it's a really, really great tool because district Rotarians can keep up with the students and they can see what they're doing. And then potential students and even students who are waiting to go out can see, oh, this might be what my exchange looks like. It's um, a really great tool to um, portray all the best parts of exchange. So hashtagging, hashtagging, I know seems intimidating. Um, it can be a lot at first, but I'm gonna really try to simplify it for you all. 
So the first thing I got to say is that you can't go wrong with hashtagging. Um, there's really no right way. You just have to hashtag as much as possible. So if you're not sure, okay, what do I hashtag? How do I hashtag? Let me give, give you an example. Let's say I wanted to post um, about a country in um, my district that we exchange with. I would say, okay, France. I would hashtag France, hashtag Rotary Youth Exchange, hashtag travel, and you can keep going and going and going. Basically, you want to hashtag things that highlight um, your post that make it more visible to everyone. And if you're not sure, okay, what do I hashtag? There's also the possibility of looking at what other districts or exchange programs are doing. So in this case, you're not stealing their content, you're trying to emulate what they're doing, emulate their success. Um, another way you can check, oh, is this the right hashtag for me? Is as you can see, I was searching Rotary Youth Exchange and it pops up right there and you can click it and see what comes up. You'll actually see that in the next slide. Um, another thing to consider is um, the outbound student. So, most of the time they they hashtag a lot of different things and you can sort of um, take what they're using and hashtag that as well. Um, also, if you have a yearly event, it's a great idea to come up with a hashtag for it. So for example, my district, they we have an outbound orientation every year or in a normal year. <laughs> um, and so if I were to make a hashtag for it, I'd say hashtag outbound orientation 2021 that way everyone who's at the event can hashtag it and you can include that in your profile so when i search up rotor youth exchange these are the two things that pop up first the top post so that means the posts with most um the most interaction and likes and so on and then the most recent post, which is self-explanatory, but that's a great way to check, okay, what is under this hashtag? How can I add to this hashtag? Is this hashtag right for me? So it's also a good idea to look at when the best times to post is for you. A small disclaimer with this one, this is for the time zone um, EST and it is for the United States. And this does change depending on where you live, um, in which time zone you're in, all of that. But it's as easy as Googling and um, seeing when the best time to post is based on Instagram's algorithm, which also constantly changes. So it's not a bad idea to keep updated with that. Um, but by posting in these time frames and um, trying to follow this, you end up reaching more followers and more potential followers uh, just because of the way Instagram's algorithm works. So uh, this is one of the more technical aspects, but uh, analytics and engagement. So I want you guys to look at these five questions and then ask yourselves that every time you look at your Instagram. So um, when you post, you don't just leave it in the universe and hope that it does well. You definitely want to check up and see how your content fares. So did this IGTV work? Did this IGTV reach a lot more people? How many people engaged with what? How many followers do I have? What is succeeding? What isn't? Because the more things succeed, the more people you reach. And so one of the best ways to access this is through the insights tab and that is um, right on your profile so you just click this insights tab and as you can see here you can check the recent highlights so um how many accounts you've reached and it likes to tell you how many accounts you've reached versus um the last week so as you can see here this week, January 27th through February 2nd, um, more accounts were reached. And you can keep track of how many people um, are interacting with you also through the content interactions. Um, this week we hadn't posted anything, hence no interactions, but normally you could just click here and look at the specifics. 
Um, you can also take a look at your followers and check, oh, am I losing? Am I gaining followers? H how is everything going? And it actually expands a little bit further. Um, there are more, um, I guess, themes under this tab. Um, another way to look at, okay, what, what do these numbers mean? What am I trying to understand here is this um, information button right here. That way you can look at what each of these categories means and um, you can look at what they mean specifically for your content. So this is one of the easiest ways to just keep up with um, how everything on your Instagram is faring. And I believe that is it for me. I will pass it back to Shannon. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, so we've talked a little bit about how important having um, attractive content, nice visuals, that sort of thing is. And, and some people hear that at times and think, oh, I need a graphic designer. I need to go spend money on Adobe Photoshop um, or that sort of thing. But in the last several years, um, there's a, a lot of different online tools that have come pretty far. And Canva um, is one of those. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so it would be fun if um, we could do a live demo, but I didn't want to tempt the demo gods today. Um, and so uh, after we get to the next slide, we'll be able to see a um, a screenshot of the home page. So once you've logged in um, at to canva.com, um, you get access to a whole library of, of tools for Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, posters, um, logo design from templates, all sorts of different things, all from your browser and in a fairly easy to use tool. Um, they also, before we move on, um, I'm gonna have Anna go back up to that top menu where it says learn. Um, they also have a, an entire video library of graphic design using their tools, how to upload photos. Um, that is a great tool that's really well built out. So say we want to make an Instagram post. Um, we would, click design anything, type in Instagram post, and that would lead us to this screen. Um, once you're in the main portion of the tool, um, the very top option on the left-hand side is templates. Um, this is a place I like to start if I don't already have an idea or a vision uh, for a post. I just start typing in holiday, picnic, Christmas <laughs> announcement um, until I find a template that I kind of like the way um, it looks generally. And then I, I take that as inspiration um, to go from there. So say my, um, my district is having a welcome barbecue at a park. Um, and I want to announce that to anyone who's following us on um, Instagram in case I've got old host families that would in be interested in coming or I just wanna announce that we're cool and we're having a barbecue. Um, from this template, I have total control with drag and drop um, to edit everything you see in that red, um, pack your baskets, it's our annual picnic. Um, so if I wanted to, for example, um, add a photo, I would go to the uploads area. Um, if I wanna use a photo that is out on the internet, um, I can search photos and it will show me both royalty free photos that are free to use that I don't need to worry about attributing. Um, and it will also have paid photos. So if you really find something you like, um, you can buy the rights to use it on social media for sometimes as little as 99 cents. Um, you'll also be able to add elements. So boxes, triangles, clip art, that sort of thing. Um, if you get really fancy, you can even add sound and make really short videos um, in this tool. So that left-hand side just is gonna guide you through the tool um, to do a lot of different customizations. Um, so let's jump to the next slide. Um, so as you can see, um, it's 
the same idea, um, but I've customized it. I've changed the background. I added a different picture. Um, I changed it from picnic to barbecue. Um, and I did this by simply clicking on the different elements um, and dragging things around, pulling things from, yep, that menu that Anna's highlighting into the, the center of the page. Um, so this is a great tool that I would say if you're worried about creating um, different things to just go ahead and try it out. You can drag and drop it if you don't like it. Um, you can hit the back button um, there in that blue menu bar. There's a little arrow that curves and undo everything you've done um, if you don't like something that's happened. And so it's a really fairly easy way to jump in and make a lot of content um, without needing Photoshop skills, for example. Um, once you're ready to then post this to Instagram, um, you would click that white download button at the top of the page. And we're gonna jump to the next slide, wonderful. Um, and so once you do that, it will give you the option to choose the file type. Um, so for example, sometimes I will pick something that's actually a video and I just want it to, I just thought it was a cool layout for a picture. And I will just change that from video to PNG. Um, and PNG is just an abbreviation for a file type that works really well on the internet. Um, JPEG, for example, is another one. You can't really go wrong here, um, but, it, but Canva will also make suggestions on what file type um, it thinks you should download based off the type of template you, um, you made. For example, PDFs you can make here. Um, there's also a few grayed out options with a little yellow icon next to them. Um, those are pro features. So like a lot of things, um, Canva is a freemium model, meaning you can get a free account that does a lot of things and a pro account that does a few more things. Um, someone in our morning session pointed out that there might be a discount for nonprofits. So um, that could be an option. Um, you can also do about 98.5% of things with the free account. Um, and once you have an entire social media team um, helping your district, you've got, you know, four volunteers, um, that might be when Pro could be useful. Um, but you can also share templates uh, without that Pro account. Um, so for example, go, jumping back to our barbecue post at this point, I've downloaded it. Um, I can just take this and directly post it to Instagram from my computer or my phone. Um, and it, once you get comfortable kind of moving around the tool, um, you can do some of this stuff in maybe five minutes. Um, I, I know I'm not wonderful at Photoshop. When I open that program up, I have to do YouTube tutorials and it takes me way too long. Um, so Canva is really my go-to. Um, as, as you start playing with that tool, you might notice that most of the conference advertising start look, starts looking familiar. And that's because everything from our Facebook posts to the PDF announcing the speakers was all made inside of Canva. Um, so let's jump to the next slide. And so just to double check, um, so the last thing I just wanna to touch on is those design elements. Um, so we just want to leave you with a couple of takeaways. So you don't need to be a full blown graphic designer to make really nice, attractive content. Um, we would really recommend don't be afraid of white space. So what that means is don't fill up every nook and corner and cranny um, with something on, on the design. Go ahead and leave space. Space can really help draw attention to the pieces. Um, empty space can draw attention, even though it sounds a little counterintuitive to what you're trying to highlight. Um, additionally, with social media, people are scrolling through on their phone. If you have a huge block of text, um, it's not going to grab the eye. And so less text is going to be better than filling it up with more text. Um, additionally, as you're just getting started, um, don't go too wild with different fonts. Go ahead and pick one or two or three. Um, and and have a heading font and a body font. So a, a heading and then everything else. <laughs> um, the more fonts you use, the more confusing it can be for the eye. Um, additionally, I know I can be um, 
This is a do as I say, not as I do. I bold things. I add exclamations. There's exclamations all over Whova. Um, the more you have these in your images, though, or your content, the, the more visually distracting it is. So if you want to bold something, go ahead and only bold that one really, really important thing. Um, additionally, simplify your color palette. Um, Rotary, for example, is the brand, like the, the brand guide for Rotary has like 13 different colors. Um, as you're getting started, or even once you're up and running, maybe pick three or four um, that you can use, that you like the way they look together. Um, using 13 different colors is gonna just overwhelm your audience. Um, so again, use color wisely to draw attention to what you really want people to focus on. Um, and then also just keep accessibility in the, in the back of your mind when you're designing things. For example, if you make text really, really small, it's going to be hard for some people to see and view on their phone. Um, it also is going to make those of us who can't see past our nose not be able to read your content in a lot of different um, environments. Additionally, there are there are people that are colorblind. If you use only red and green on a design, you're going to have some people who it's going to look like one solid block and they're going to wonder why you have one empty blank box on your um, on your Instagram feed. So, for example, at Christmas, uh, be careful with only using red and green um, and just keep a couple of those different pieces in mind. Um, and the last piece is if this seems overwhelming, don't worry. Um, there are some really good short YouTube series or on Canva's website that give you short two to three minute snippets for introduction to graphic design. Um, we'll also be linking a couple of those in the Whova app once we're done with today. Um, and with that, I will hand it back to Anna and Liz. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shannon and, and Anna. Um, I want to invite everyone just to submit your questions, go to the chat function and just type in your questions. Um, and I'm going to start with um, one that we've received already. Um, this is from Don, who says, we have some clubs and even our district have issues with past administrators of social media not passing along their credentials. We are working on a policy document which, which explains that they do not own the sites, but how, they, how we would recommend, how would you recommend we address the issue? And Shannon, I'm going to throw that one back to you. I don't know if you've got, if you've got some ideas. That, that is an age-old question. Um, we're struggling with that as, at Nyan as well. There's about three different Facebook pages out there that I do not know who is running them that are from like 2010. Um, sometimes you, you have to go the nuclear option, which is starting a new account. Um, it's really difficult to get uh, the big social media companies to help with account um, creation from a, a very small uh, from from a very small user. Um, so having a way that you control the email that it's set up under. So for example, at our district, we own rmrye.org, and we control all of the emails that are used that exist on that domain. So having a Gmail account, for example, that is locked to um, a couple of people have you know, maybe have the password and that's a backup email for the account or the email account is on a domain that the, the district controls. Um, that's going to be the best way that you can reset and recover that account. Um, additionally, there are some password manager tools like LastPass where you can set up um, a shared password and share that password with other people by their email address. Um, I can post some information about that in um, in Whova because now I'm really realizing passwords are probably not nearly as interesting to the rest of you as they are to me. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Shannon. And I'm going to ask you this question. Um, the, the Instagram account, should you be setting it up? Do you know if it's called an, a business account or a professional account that you should set up? Or is there a difference? Um, Anna. What? I said, I'm, I'm going to give that question to you. Yes, that's what <laughs> yeah. I said. Anna, do you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, 
The answer is they are one and the same. So you can say business or professional account. Either way, um, it does like there is a difference between a personal and a business slash professional account. So all you need to know is that those are the only two that exist and business or professional is the same thing. Thanks, Anna. Do you know what the demographics are of most Instagram users? Is it the 15 to 18 age group? Um, I'd say, well, with TikTok, it changed a lot for sure. Um, a lot of the younger students are leaning towards TikTok, but Instagram remains very, very um, used by a lot of um, teenagers and young adults. So between the ages of 15 and 26 um, is particularly the demographic that um, uses Instagram. But at this point, so many businesses and um, people have logged on to Instagram that it's much more evenly spread. Thanks, Anna. Um, Ward asked a question, Shannon, I'm going to uh, throw it to you. Can you address growing audiences, specifically the kiddos? What's happening there? Yeah, so, so one article I've read recently um, talked about engaging in, an, in a really authentic way with your audience is a way to grow that audience. So for example, um, I was just talking with someone yesterday, I don't really understand emoji culture. Um, I use emojis just kind of off the cuff with some people, but I don't have an authentic voice when it comes to using emojis. And so I don't use them um, when I'm posting as a brand. So I, I try not to use them very much with Nyan and I try not to use them um, on our Instagram page. So, so being a, a fake teenager um, is not going to land well. Either get your Rotex to help out and write as teenagers or write as young people um, and don't pretend to be a quote certified young person would be my biggest suggestion. Um, the other piece is creating content that, that engages people, drives them to ask a question, drives them to, you know, share their favorite dish or save this post so you know our deadlines for um, applications this year, that sort of thing, are going to help grow your audience and have the algorithm show that to more similar users. Um, ads some of the research says is not at, ads are not potentially as effective um, with younger people. They see that it's an ad and they scroll by sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Uh, we've had a request uh, from Laura to include some simple introductory tutorials um, to Instagram um, in, our, in our resources. Wonderful, we'll track some down for you. Great, thank you. Uh, Fides asks a question, if you make an account associated with your email, how can you transfer to the next person? Shannon, I might throw that one back to you. Um, so my understanding is, is that you can't. Um, that that username and that email are kind of locked to each other. So if you have, if for example, you started it under your personal email, um, you may want to create a new account and try to migrate your audience over before it grows too large. Thanks, Shannon. Um, Sarah has a number of questions. She says, what are some activities you can do on Insta? Um, I've seen people do a blazer feature every Wednesday, that sort of thing, um, but something more unique. Um, do you have any ideas? Anna, can I throw that one to you? So what are some activities you can do? Yes, of course. So um, I think that's always one of the biggest struggles of Instagram is trying to figure out, okay, what can I do that's unique? Because obviously there are a lot of exchange programs out there and they have similar ideas, but um, I would definitely say like focus on what makes Rotary Youth Exchange in particular um, special. So the blazer feature, I love that idea. Um, I think I might I might do that too. We, we were talking about that in my district, actually doing something like that. But basically something that like highlights, um, I guess the students really is what you want to highlight. Um, 
for example, we're actually having some takeovers now, even though there aren't any students out, we're having some of our former exchange students do uh, some takeovers and talk about something in particular with their host country. Um, another thing that I would suggest is having Rotex tell stories. So um, this can be a former inbound or a former outbound but having them tell a story specifically relating to exchange and maybe having a series would be a great idea. So maybe your series can be, what's the craziest food I ever ate on exchange? And different people could talk from different areas, from different host countries. And that for me um, is very, very engaging. And you just really have to keep in mind, what do you want your audience to like feel? What do you want them to, to think when they see your content? So if you want them to be like, oh my God, wow, this, this is really cool. I can't believe you had the chance to try this. Um, then that would be a great way. You, you really just want to put yourself in, in that mindset and that should help you when you're creating content. And here's another content question, uh, which relates to audience uh, from John. Should Instagram and Facebook content be coordinated or different? I think there's certainly no harm in having um, crossovers between Facebook and Instagram. In fact, they specifically <laughs> made it so that that can happen. So you can post a story on Instagram and simultaneously have it posted on Facebook. Um, I think that, as I said, your audience is different depending on the platform. So maybe your stories can overlap, but not necessarily your posts. So for example, on Facebook, I might want to have a lot more information than I would typically share on Instagram because that's what my audience would want. Um, so you just have to keep in mind those like tiny differences um, and really structure your content based on who you're talking to. The other, you, I would Shannon. say jumping in real quick, the biggest um, time I noticed someone has probably cross posted from Facebook to Instagram and ha hasn't localized it to Instagram is when they post links in the captions because you can't click on a link in a caption in Instagram the way you can on Facebook. Um, and so that's kind of the biggest, oh, that person just cross posted and they are not quite giving in their Instagram audience the love they're giving their Facebook audience. <laughs> And here's another uh, Facebook question uh, from Sarah, um, sorry, from Beth. Uh, would Facebook be a better way to reach parents? So I definitely think that there's something to be said for um, Facebook reaching the parents. Um, most parents will, will be on Facebook, but you have to understand the different functionalities of both. So Facebook, of course, is a great, um, method of communicating with your parents and teachers and um, your district Rotarians and that's great um, but that's I mean you just have to really tailor it to that platform that's not saying that parents can't access the Instagram as well I know personally my father he follows uh, our district Instagram and he stays updated that way so there there's nothing that says they have to be exclusive um, you just have to, again, think about what you want to do in each. Thank you, Anna. Um, Wes has posted some interesting stats on, um, on the number of people, <clears throat> sorry, on, on, the num on the demographics for Instagram. Apparently 75% of 18 to 24 year olds use Instagram, 57% um, of 15 to 30 year olds, 47% of 30 to 49, and then 23% of 50 to 64. Whereas my question back to you might be, um, which country is that in? Because you'll have different stats for different countries. Uh, slightly, the demographics will be similar, um, but may not be that. I'm assuming that that may be the United States. Um, so I don't know if either uh, Shannon or Anna, you want to comment on any of that? Or feel um, a, a brief comment. Um, the, the stats, I say, I, I would say are, are important to give you a general idea. And then from there, it's finding your audience online. It might turn out that you're trying to reach um, potential volunteers in your area that like working with kids or that have kids that are following their kids on Instagram um, or host families and you post a bunch of cool host family content. Um, if 
if a lot of adults have kids, they're probably going to be where their kids are just to keep tabs on things. Um, and so you might be surprised at the number of adults you're finding on Instagram as well, and that those might be the exact adults you're trying to reach to share information on the program as well. So the, the stats are a great place to start, um, but then doing research, seeing who's in your audience, seeing who's interacting with your content um, is, is gonna tell you how to keep growing. Another question here is how do you direct your page to reach your own area? And that's from Jane. Shannon, can I throw that one to you? How do you direct your page to your own area? Yeah, so one, one thing that we had come up as a suggestion in the earlier session um, was connecting with your local high school um, and trying to do, working with their official accounts um, to do Instagram takeovers about exchange students and growing your audience that way in a local way, um, or adding on hashtags that might relate to your local school. So for example, my high school was, our abbreviation was SHHS. And so if I was trying to reach potential students at Smoky Hill, I might tag something related to, you know, the Smoky Hill graduation years coming up in the next couple of years on a couple of my announcement posts to see if it could reach folks following those hashtags as well. Thanks, Shannon. Um, here's a question from Gretchen, um, which is a thought provoking one. She asks, why do you suppose that high school kids can start an account with 3000 plus followers almost immediately while barely posting? While when we try to actively cultivate a following through posts with hashtags, it takes forever. Anna, do you want to kick that one off? Yeah, yeah. So trust me, it's a question I've asked myself too. <laughs> because there, were, there was a time when I was trying to grow my own personal following and I was just wondering, how are people gaining so many followers? Uh, but so there's a lot of different answers to that question. The first one, there's a possibility that they have an app that just automatically like uh, has it show up as them having 3,000 followers, but it's not actually uh, real people. That's uh, something that some teenagers use. Um, there's also um, this idea of maybe they're posting a lot of content. When you post content, Instagram rewards you. <laughs> they have you pop up in more searches. They have you pop up higher on the feed. You get less lost in the shuffle of everything. And so the more they post, the more they hashtag, the more they become visible and the more people interact, hence the big followings. And then you know, the thing with social media is you never know what's going to strike gold. <laughs> you never know what's going to be that thing that everyone is like, wow, this is amazing. And suddenly you have 50,000 followers. <laughs> you just never know. So uh, like I said, it's trial and error and you just keep going and going. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Shannon, you've got a good point to make about the followers, the fake followers. Yeah, it... Buying fake followers is fairly inexpensive. It doesn't actually help you reach real people, but it can make you look really fancy. Um, so there's always the off chance that those are not real accounts um, or that their top commenters are actually accounts they own. So not everything that you see on social media is real. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Shannon. And Marcel made a good comment about uh, when we were talking about demographics. He said um, those demographics that he gave are from the USA, but just to remember that there are differences in usage between urban, suburban, and rural um, that we need to consider. And obviously each country needs to, um, needs to review their own stats um, and, and demographics. Uh, someone did make a really good point. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump back. I'm going to come to that in a moment. Uh, Gretchen also says that we have to remember that the, the parents of the students are getting younger. So they say they talk about the, the new 40 is now the new 30 or 40 is now the new 30, 50 is now the new th uh, 40, etc. So parents of the, of the students are getting younger. So there may be less people on Facebook and more people on um, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, etc. Um, a really good comment um, came in from 
um, I'm trying to see who this was. I think it was Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. He says that the email, your email can be changed via setting. So you can move from one person to a, a different account. If you go to settings and then accounts and then personal information, you can change the email um, and who it is from, from say an, a personal into Rotex. So that's a great comment. Thank you very much for that. And for the people who are on, on top of things. Uh, I think we have one, uh, we actually don't have questions. We don't really have a response sorry, enough time for this last one. We've only got about three minutes left. Uh, so we've got one or two questions left that what we'll do is just answer those in the Hoover app. Um, and so you can respond or have a look at those there. We'll do that uh, after this meeting. Thank you. I just want to ask um, Anna just to um, give some closing remarks and then I'll pass it over to Shannon. Thank you, Anna. So uh, I really want to emphasize to everyone that this is a learning process and you should never be afraid to try anything. So your content can be whatever you want it to be. And maybe some things do well, some things don't, but you're learning, you're trying, and that's what's most important. Um, we will also be uh, posting a full length resource document, which should have tutorials, uh, possibly from YouTube. Uh, we'll have the resources that we really like to use when we're talking about social media, specifically Instagram. And um, yeah, if, if you guys have any more questions, we're happy to answer them um, in the Hoover app. Thanks, Anna. Shannon, would you like to uh, give your closing remarks? Yeah, so the last uh, thing I'll just say is giving this to one person might lead to burnout, especially if they're doing other things as well. Um, so having a social media team or one person is maybe, you know, the primary person responsible, but they've got a team of two or three people helping them make content or contact and line up Rotex or contact and line up people to do Q&As and that sort of thing. Um, can really help you provide a better experience for your audience. Um, leaving one person out by themselves is probably the quickest way to burn out your social media person. Those are good words. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. I hope that you've learned something, and I hope that we've had a... Um... Uh, an educational time and I hope that you'll go back and have a look at the resources and look at ways that you are able to reach um, more students um, and educate more people about the Rotary Youth Exchange Program. So thank you very, very much for joining us at Instagram 101. Thanks everybody. Um, so like we said, we'll have more questions. Um, jump in Hoover. We're, we're happy to answer them. Um, we will save the chat and try to grab anything we didn't get. Um, and other than that, I am going to go ahead and close, um, close the meeting. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. Bye.